Hi everyone, welcome to Comfort Life channel. I'm so happy to see you here today and I guess you're happy to see me back as well. Well, I do apologize for not uploading videos for so long and uh, I do have a reason which I will share with you a little bit later. And so anyways, I'm happy to be back and I hope I'll do my best in the future and I will have regular uploads just as before. So in today's video, we are going to talk about sunscreens. Well, I actually have a lot to say about sunscreens and sun care and protection and all this kind of thing. So I'll just try to put um, the first topic about sunscreens today in this video and then probably I'll move forward with other things or maybe you'll have any questions. So today's topic is going to be what is the most important thing in sunscreen? Well, probably there are more than one thing that is very important, but I think everything starts with the ingredients, right? What you are applying on your skin and how much you can rely on this product towards, you know, your skin protection. As you know, sun is, uh, it's actually great, right? Everybody likes how warm it is, how sunny and, uh, well, everybody loves sun, right? Nothing to hide. But sun is something that is number one reason for your skin start premature aging, you know, sedging, wrinkling, you know, pigmentation, and um, it's not good news. And of course, sun is also um, has a very strong impact on skin cancer. So taking all these things into consideration, we have a very strong conclusion that we need to protect our skin from sun. Well, an interesting fact that we actually need to do it on a daily basis. And even when the sun is cloudy and there is no visible sun, you still need to protect your skin. And now let's get really smart about um, sun's ultraviolet radiation. Well, normally, you know, the infrared rays it is something that makes us warm and the visible rays, this is something that, you know, provides us with the daylight. The ultraviolet radiation is very bad for skin and it is divided into three different groups. The UVB, which you're probably familiar with, UVA, something that we don't really hear that much um, about nowadays, unfortunately, and UVC, something that you've probably never heard about at all. So UVC is the radiation that is filtered out by the atmosphere. We're not going to discuss the ozone layer depletions and all that kind of things. That's a different story, but hopefully it does its job properly. And then UVB and UVA um, radiation. This is something that we need to be concerned about the most. UVB radiation, that's something that makes our skin this tingling reaction, that actually is something that gives us a sunburn. So UVB radiation, they provide us with the instant damage of the skin, you know, when you could, um, it depends on your skin type, of course, let's say if you're a very sensitive skin and you're out on a very, you know, bright day, and within 15 minutes you feel like you're burning, your face is burning, you know, your hands, and that's UVB rays. Well, UVA rays are not as strong as UVB rays, but you shouldn't really count on that a lot because they're 100 times more UVE rays than UVB rays, which makes UVE rays still a very serious concern, and it also has a very serious impact on your skin. Well, basically, UVA rays, they are considered to be the reason number one for premature age. It's a well-known fact that the sun is the strongest between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., or some say 3 p.m. It means that UVB rays are the strongest during this period of time. Of course, clouds, they do filter some of the uh, UVB rays and you know that say if you're having um, a tan in the cloudy day, it will be like really nice and even and you won't burn. Well, that's good. I mean, good as long as I think you should never tan. I mean, I'm not here to say you should never ever tan. It's just my own experience. I used to tan a lot being as a kid, you know, being a kid and then younger, but then I've noticed that Every time um, I tanned my skin, my skin's reaction was really bad and different. I know it might depend on the diet and stuff, but I never had a nice, even, um, you know, tan, and I always was red, and it never um, lasts uh, for a long time, so I made up a decision that I probably don't, don't need that, because I, it, it makes my skin suffer a lot, and it doesn't make me look beautiful either way. And uh, I know that everyone's skin is different. My skin is not what, I mean, at least was never sensitive to sun. So I don't know what changed. Probably my skin, you know, my skin's reaction means something. I don't know why. But uh, I'm a person right now who's a strong believer that you do need to protect your skin with the um, sunscreen. 
And if you remember, you know, back in the days, like 19th century or something, a lady always had an umbrella and like, you know, the longest possible gloves on her hands, like everything was covered and they were, you know, not tanned. Right now, you know everything about the uh, ultraviolet radiation. The only thing I forgot to mention is this, is that UVB rays, they cannot, um, you know, go through um, the glass. Let's say if you're sitting in a car, the UVB rays, they won't pass through the glass, but UVA rays will. And that's, you know, that really when I found that out, I was like, really? Okay. And another thing you need to know is the surface, the surface such as snow, grass, cement, you know, surface, um, like anything, like water, it reflects the array, the UVB and UVA rays. And for example, if you're sitting in a nice long hat and you're thinking that you're not getting any UV rays, you know, they won't really get into your skin face, right, on your face, that's not true because the rays will go down and then they will reflect from whatever surface it is and you still will get them on your face. That's how tricky they are. So what I really want to mention right now is that every time you shop for a sunscreen or every time you read something FDA say about some sunscreen, it's all about SPF factor. And SPF factor always says how, you know, the, you know, this or that product protects you from the UVB rays. But it's a rare thing that you could see anything saying about UVA rays. What you need to know about your sunscreen is that it protects you both from the UVB radiation and the UVA radiation. Well, actually every other sunscreen they do protect from UVB radiation, but how can you know if that protects you from the UVA rays as well? Well, the only way to say is to look at the ingredient list, at the active ingredient list. You have to be careful with that because there are two types of ingredient list, the active one and the, the, the one down below. So you're not looking at the one down below, you don't care for that one. You need the one that uh, lists only active ingredients. So among these ingredients, you do need to find such things as titanium dioxide, zinc dioxide, avibenzone, I hope I say it right, and if you live outside of the United States, it will be called as Mexoreal. Don't get scared by these names. Uh, this is something that protects you from that harmful UVA rays. And uh, there are many other ingredients like benzophone or oxybenzone. They sound familiar like avibenzone, right? But it's a totally different thing and they don't provide you with that real UVA radiation that you need and your skin needs. That's a very important knowledge to know and even if you grab your sunscreen right now and you find these ingredients in there, okay, good for you. Uh, it's still good to know, right, what you're buying, what you're applying on your face. If you grab your sunscreen right now and you don't find it over there, I guess you just need to throw that sunscreen away and, uh, you know, do a research for a new product, the one that contains these ingredients as actives. So another thing I was really surprised that I was reading a magazine and it, it was like, you know, giving it an advertising for some sunscreen. They spoke a lot about uh, proper UVB protection and then I just read that nonsense saying that this sunscreen contains some antioxidants which will protect your skin from UVA radiation. Well, I mean, I understand that it all sounds very beautiful and the, it's marketing hype and the, the, the companies, the cosmetic companies, they don't need to provide anything. Their main goal is to sell. And everybody needs to have that in mind, you know, like first thing when you're shopping for anything. And the thing is that antioxidants, they is something that is not really stable, right? And it is something that cannot really, it's not even supposed to stay on the surface of your skin. It's supposed to go, you know, down deeper so it could do some good stuff, you know, protect from free radicals and all these kind of things. How can antioxidant be a protection from the, you know, sun? I have no idea. So, and you have to put common sense in anything you read because you don't want to waste a lot of money or you don't want to rely on something and then you will find out that it never or all these years provided you with that, you know, with that result which you were awaiting for this product to have. So that is how simple it is. That is number one thing I want you to know about sunscreen and uh, you know pay attention to. Another thing, but really briefly, I'll tell you. Also, be careful with the sunscreen saying that they are like they provide you with all day protection. That is nonsense. Or that they are waterproof. That is nonsense too. What the most they could do is be water resistant, but not waterproof. So and be careful with the sunscreens. But I think FDA really 
don't allow this to be in the market right now. Those that say that they provide you with the SPF 100, well, that's really a nonsense too. And let's see why, because what is actually SPF? It's some protection fact. So actually SPF 15 will let you stay outside 15 times longer the time that you normally could spend outside without wearing a sunscreen and becoming pink. So let's say if you have SP, if, you, if it takes you 25 minutes, right, to get pink and you get the SP of 15, all you need to do is 15 times 25 equals 375. 375 will be the minutes amount. You could stay outside. So there is no such thing as all day production, right? You have to make it clear. If you are under the sun and sweating, you know, if you're in the water, you have to reapply the sunscreen. You know, apply it liberally and make sure you reapply it every other time it goes away, right? And I know it's been a very long video, but I just want to add this. Um, in the end, probably you will find this uh, interesting. The, there is no sunscreen that will provide you 100% protection from the uh, UVB rays, right? And let's say the sunscreen with SPF uh, factor 2 will protect you from 50% of the UVB rays. An SPF 10 filter will give you an 85% of protection. The SPF 15 will give you the protection of the 95% and the SPF from 30 to 50 will give you a 97% protection. So it means that there is still a window when your skin, you know, cannot be protected. And that's why uh, sometimes when even you apply sunscreen, you know, whatever the SPF factor it is, your skin might still get color, you know, after you are in the sun. All sunscreen agents work by breaking and dispersing the UV radiation so that's what it does and then in my next videos I will be talking more about the ingredients like you know if you have a concern how healthy they are or let's say if you don't know like if uh, sunscreen can cause cancer because it's a very popular question nowadays and just uh, uh, for now so you know if you're looking for a sunscreen with less irritating ingredients for you or for your baby uh, look for the one that has only titanium dioxide or zinc dioxide as a main ingredient because they are actually benign for skin and they have minimum to no risk for allergic reaction. So I hope this information was somehow helpful and now you will shop for sunscreen properly and your skin will be in better hands. And um, thank you so much for all your support. I wish you to stay very happy, very healthy as always, and I will see you later.